we learned how to extract colors uh, from uh, images uh, and all of this stuff. And then we started um, basically looking at the um, style guide. So we are going to continue from there. So um, as a quick recap, um, I basically asked you guys to spend some time to look into these resources and then also learn more about auto layout. So I, I'm just going to, for the sake of time, I'm just going to, I'm just going to assume um, everybody has uh, been able to do that um, so far. And so um, I will do my best not to spend too much time explaining auto layouts, but then focus on like what we need to achieve today. So for today, um, you guys have access to these documents. And so let me just quickly share it again. Um, hopefully I can help, help sharing it. Um, but then basically um, today we are going to be continuing with our style guide, looking at the typography scales, how to build a typography scale. And the reason why this is important is the projects that we are working on specifically relies heavily, I would say 90% of the structure of a blog has to do with the typography skills, how to space of typography, the canning, leading, line height, and all of those principles. So we need to learn how to structure that. And then we can also look at the grid system, uh, which again, I have provided a lot of resources that you can watch or take some notes from. And then we will continue with our one frame of high fidelity UI of the article page. Uh, after which um, I would um, let you guys basically design the rest of the blog pages on your own for next week. Uh, so once you are done with this lesson, I will show you exactly what to do and how to go about it. So yeah, that's that for today. And uh, let's dive right in. So, um, this is our color scheme. Uh, we have all of these colors that we, we can use uh, on our blog. Um, these are mostly the primary, secondary, tertiary colors. And then these are like accent colors um, based on what we've seen so far, the color usage. Now for, for typo, typography, um, there are various ways um, you can actually um, build a type scale, right? And the thing is there are a lot of, there are a lot of resources that um, you can use to do this. Now, again, it's very important for you to rely on some of these resources, especially as a beginner, because they provide you like uh, moderate, like balanced typography skills that are like consistent across most products. So um, this type scale uh, platforms really just provide you um, literally everything you need. One of my favorites has to do with the material design type system. So for all Google products, this is the type system they use, right? And so you know how Google products are designed. They are very like robust and, and good. And so for our type system, we'll be using this type scale generator. I've already added the link uh, here, this one, this second link here. Let me just highlight it. Uh, this one, yes. You can choose to use the first one, which is this one, uh, if you want. Uh, and it also gives you an example of how the UI will look when you use a type scale. Uh, I just personally uh, would prefer the Google one. So, um, yeah. And then also there are several Figma plugins that help you do that. So you just need to type um, enter type scale or something like that under the plugin. And I'm sure you see a lot of plugins that allows you, you see a lot that allow you to do that. So, um, yeah. Now, um, Google already provides like default type skills that they use across their product. And there are a few things we need to learn about typography. Now, the first one has to do with the fonts, okay? Now, um, the fonts is basically what you see when the words are written. So for instance, the headline. So you are able to see this because it's basically designed based on a font called Roboto. And there are several fonts that you can, I'm sure all of us would probably be aware um, that there are several free fonts that we can use in our apps and all of this stuff. And I think last time we discussed that we'll be using Inter as our preferred font. Now in the type scale system, right? Uh, this particular 
Cloud Generator allows us to select Inter as the file form. So you can see the interface has changed. Now, based on this hierarchy, let's look at some important things. Now, when you select any of these type skills, you realize there are three parameters here. So the first one has to do with the weight, uh, the font, which is Inter. The second one has to do with the weight, which is normal. The third one has to do with the size and then the letter spacing, okay? Now, there is another parameter called the line height. We'll be looking into that as we go, but then that's probably the fifth parameter we would have to also consider when we are designing. So let me break it down. Um, so our type scale here would have four parameters. The font, uh, font size, line height, uh letter spacing and let's see yeah the font weight okay now how do we do this in figma so for instance this is a type scale right so let's say we take this font for instance how do we change all of these parameters in figma now we know how to add a font or type uh, text to, to our canvas. We just press T or select this um, element here. Now, if we want to modify the fonts to basically follow our type scale system, so let's take the headline one. So let's say this is headline one, okay? It says we should use a font of inter. So we select the font. It has a font of inter already being used. Then the next thing it's saying is we should use the uh, weight of light. So let's select inter. Now you see here, the second parameter here is the font weight. So when you click on this drop down, you see a lot of weights here, right? And the type scale is telling us to use what light. So we are going to select that. Then the next thing is to use a font size of 94. So when you go here, you see this box here that shows 48. We just change it to 94. So you see the size has increased. And then the next one is the line, a letter spacing, which is minus uh, 1.5 pixels. So we'll just, yeah, letter spacing. So when you hover on it, you see that it shows letter spacing. When you hover on here, it shows you line height. So let's do the letter spacing first, minus one. 0.4, is it minus 1.4, let me see, 5, okay, minus 1.5 pixels, so we have that. Now, another thing that we need to know about this, which is not stated here, has to do with the line height. So the line height, again, this is how the line height works. So assuming we have this, right? And we have a line height, and I like to use relative figures, right? So let's say we have a line height of 100%. What does this mean? It means that the line height is 100% of the font weight. So when you do your calculation, you realize that 100% means what? 48 pixels. So the line height is the same as the font um, size, okay? Now, you wouldn't want your letters to be cramped like this, okay? And so when you are doing your line height, you want some spacing between the various uh, text lines. And so usually what you do is you do a line height for, let's say, bigger fonts, you do something like, let's say, 110%. So you see that there is more spacing, it becomes more legible. And as I said from the beginning, your typography, plays a huge role in how your design looks, okay? Let me show you guys an example. Um, let's say medium, for instance. And then let's select this article. Good. Now let's inspect this medium page and see how they structured uh, their typography. Good. Also shared a few uh, plugins, um, extensions with you to make this easy. So we have what fonts, right? So let's see how this is structured. Now, you see that they are using a font called Son with a weight of 700. So you see the style is normal. 
the font weight is 700, the size is 42, and then the line height of 52. Now, see what happens when we reduce the line height. Uh, so let's inspect, uh, let's see, line height 52. Let's make the line height as the same, the same as the font. You see what happens? It cramps. So even though this looks okay, but then for an article, it's not very legible. The more you reduce it, the more you realize that the line height cramps. And you don't want your line height to be too big as well. You want to keep a consistent balance. So I usually advise people for big text headings or like titles, use a line height of 110%. So 110% just, it's a relative scale. And so it just uses the font weight um, to basically um, uh, make your text more legible, right? Let's come here to the paragraph here. Using what font? Uh, we select here. You see that the font style is normal. The weight is 400. Size is 20. And then the line height is 32. So all of these things follow the lines, the, the typography skills that we have here. And there are different typography skills. I've shared some tutorials links um, inside the resource here that you can basically look at. But um, that should give us a fair idea of how typography works. Obviously, there are other things like how the color contrast and all of those things. So for instance, you don't want to use bold, right? So let's inspect this. Uh, where is the font weight? Uh, so you don't want to use a font weight of 700. Again, for paragraph text, it might be too huge. So the normal 400 should be enough, okay? So 400 should be enough. It's legible enough, easy to read and all. So as you look into the links I shared with you, you realize that there are more principles to think about. For instance, just imagine that you see the way this is the maximum width of the text, right? The paragraph, you see it has the maximum width up to here, right? Just imagine that, uh, let's see, um, let's see, let me see. Just imagine if, that has no maximum width. You see how the text becomes, it becomes very long for you to read. It's easier when the paragraphs width are shorter. So it's easy for you to just read quickly and then go to the next line. Then reading a long paragraph that uh, it can be very strenuous to the eye. So a lot of these principles um, are in some of these um, links here. And again, guys, there are so many senior designers or very good designers that are good with visuals, icons, and all of this stuff. They are typography isn't very good and isn't very good. And so take typography very serious. Trust me, like about 80% of your design, the beauty of your design will depend on the typography and how you space items. So just um, take that and then, yeah. So let's get back to um the lesson okay can you guys see my figma uh, i guess so i think there is a question what is a standard font size user friendly and um matching okay um it really depends on what you are designing for but most systems recommend using a body font type of 16 okay so 16 is like the basic and most of your browsers by default the font size is set as 15 and 16 and so 16 is like the base if you use so for body text 16 if you want to use something like let's say something like this where you have links and stuff smaller that do not require emphasis you can use probably 14 but then for your body text, which is this one, you should be using um, 16. So that's like the standard that most people use. Um, yeah. So back to the design. Um, good. So that's the principle of line heights and why they are, they are very important. So we have our headline one. Uh, we have all the parameters. In this case, I'm going to make this 110%. Then Again, we are not going to do the whole um, uh, setup. 
will just take um, again when you have time just build everything on your own but then for the case of these um, uh, projects you are going to just take a few that we need now these this headline one represent our article title. Uh, uh, we need a, a subtitle, something like this. And so I think we can take headline, let's see, headline, um, headline five. So that's normal 24, uh, zero letter spacing. So that's 24. Um, zero letter spacing and I think we can give this like uh, 130 line height just so it's more legible so subtitle and then the next thing we will do is have like a body text and as I said we we'll use 16 for our body text um, and then for the body body text we want it to be quite legible and so we are going to do 150 of the line height and make it regular um and then let's see the next thing we'll do is um uh, let's see we need an overline where we used to just caption a few things and so we'll be using this 10 pixel and then it needs to be block letters so so we'll name these captions we are going to make it 10 and what i'm going to do here is when you click on here you have access to more type settings. When you take the lessons or links, you watch the videos, you understand what all of these things do. Uh, for the sake of time, I wouldn't want to go through all of these things, uh, but I yeah, just spent some time playing with this. So we are going to make the case block cases, okay? And then uh, we are going to make the line height here to be one thing. Um, and I think, let's see, so normal 10 pixels, 1.5 letter spacing. So let's do our 1.5 pixels letter spacing. And I think we are good for now. Okay, great. So we have our type scale, very simple and straightforward. I think let's add one. Uh, I think the headline, let's say headline two. No headline four should be fine. So that's 33. So we'll do headline four, which is 33. Um, and it has normal 0 0.25 pixels. So 0 0.25 pixels. And then we have a normal or regular um, font weight. So this is a very simple and straightforward uh, type scale. Okay. Um, any questions on how to design a type scale? So basically, when you see somebody designing a typography scale for any weather mobile and desktop app, this is basically the process they go through to get the various type scales that they need to basically design their apps. Any questions on this? Okay. So we have our type skill. I think our style guide is almost complete. So we mentioned that our style guide will have the logo, which we have here, the colors, which we have here, and then our typography, which we have here. And then we've learned how or what various um, type skill settings mean or parameters mean. Now the next thing we are going to do is look at something called the grid system. Now, again, there are lots of resources here to basically learn more about the grid system. But then for the sake of this class, I'm going to just teach you the basics of how to set up grid system. And uh, we'll take it from there. So we're going to duplicate this page, make it more than five, and then we'll just name it layout or UI design. Great. Okay. So now we have our layout or UI design. Um, now, this is the part where we design our blog um, layout. So we'll go back to our mood board and then select one of the articles we want to use for our inspiration. 
which is this one. Take this one and bring it here. Good. Then we'll just go to frames, select a frame here, and then we choose desktop. And then we choose desktop at 1440 by 1024. But obviously, uh, we can increase the height if we want. And so we have our desktop. So we have a single article page design. It's very important to always label your frame. So you can double click here or you can double click here to label the frame. Now, how do we add grid systems to um, our designs? First of all, what are grid systems? So let's just do the usual stuff. Grid system, UI. Good. So basically, I'm sure everybody would have seen something like this before. So basically what UI grid systems do is they help you align your designs so they are consistent in layouts, right? So that's basically what grid systems do. So we'll be doing something like this. The standard um, screen is usually div uh, divided into 12 columns grid system. So that's what we are going to do today. So we are going to be using a 12 column grid system for our desktop app and uh, basically design based off that. So back to Figma. Now, if you want to add a grid system, um, if you want to add a grid system, you make sure that you have the page or the frame selected. So you can select it here or you can just click here and select it. And then you go on the right, you see something called layout grid, okay? All we need to do is just click on the plus and then it adds a grid by default. And this is a grid of 10 pixels. So when you zoom in, you see the grid. So all of the boxes are 10 pixels each. Now, how do we know that? You see that beyond this box, right? You see the red line. I don't know how much, whether you can see, but there is this small box. And then inside each of these are one pixel blocks each. So when you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So it's a 10 pixel uh, grid. So each of these 10 pixel grids uh, are added by default, but that's not what we need. What we need is a 12 column grid. This is how the websites are built. So when you look at Tailwind, Bootstrap, and all of those stuff, they all use 12 column grid system by default. And so we want to design based on that. So how are we gonna go about it? We select here. So anytime you want more options on something, you just select here. Then we want to do a column grid system. So we select here and then we say columns. Now by default, it gives you a count of five, but what we need is what, 12. Okay, so it automatically divides the page into 12 columns for us, okay? Now, another thing you need to note is these parameters here. We do not want our website to stretch from page to page. We want some margins on the left and right, okay? And so we want this page such a way that um, on the left and right, there is some margins that would give some briefing space to our design. So here on the margin, we are going to add margin of 32 pixel. Again, this can be any number you decide to use, but then I choose to use 32 um, in this instance. And then the next thing is called the gutter. So the gutter is basically the spaces between each column in our grid system. Okay, so that's the gutter. So that also counts as part of the grid system. Now the color is too vibrant, so I'm going to just reduce it a bit um, so I can see my designs properly. And I think this is good to go. So that's basically how to set a, a grid system for a 12 column desktop screen. Again, it's the same principle for mobile. So when you select the frame, you go to phone. Let's say we select the iPhone 14 right select here uh, we go to the grid we add it it adds the 10 pixel we select here we change to columns and then automatically adds the five 
in this case, I don't want to change anything aside the margin, so I can make a margin of 24, and then we have our mobile screen. So you realize that we can design inside this, just like our mobile apps. Uh, we can design our footer and things like that, okay? Now, it's really not just about columns. We can add more grids to just a single page. So as you can see, the more you click on the plus, you can add more grids. So you can add not just columns, but rows as well. So you see how what's happening now. You can add row columns if you want. So let's say we want 12 row columns. We can have something like this. So this grid allows you to create interesting patterns that helps you keep your design consistent. And yeah, you can do so many things with it. So just play with it more and you get to understand how they work. These are not part of your designs. They are just guides. So you can hide them anytime. And when you export your designs, they will not show. So just, just keep that in mind as well. So um, that's how we add grid um, to our designs. Um, the next thing we are going to do is the fun part, which we've all been waiting for, is the UI design. Um, so yeah, let's, let's jump right in. Great, 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 great. So yeah, um, grid systems are, are very, very powerful. They help you design consistently. And then again, when it's been implemented, um, it's, it really helps, uh, uh, especially whoever is doing the front-end development. So what's next? The best part of this whole session, what I personally have been waiting for, which is the UI design of this. So we want to design a blog. So I'm going to take this article uh, written by, I think, Ophelia. Um, and so we are going to use this for our case study uh, for the UI design. Now we mentioned that we are going to be taking inspiration from this. And so the first thing we are going to do is um, start adding the elements. So we have our blog title of how design thinking shapes. So we have this. Um, so what we need is our title. So we are going to experiment with a lot. So let me just copy all of these over here like this. Now, um, let's start with this title, okay? Um, so we we'll just make it black for now. And uh, again, we are going to start this without a nav bar because um, our website already has a nav bar. So we didn't really bother you guys with that. So we are going to start with this heading. So the, the heading is this, just copy and then paste it here. Now see what happens. So I just need to drag this here like this. And then we have our subtitle, which is this. So you change the color to black. Then we consider this our subtitle. This. Again, I don't know why this keeps happening, but we just take it like that. So this is our subtitle here. Uh, you see how I'm trying to keep the width to a certain level. So that's basically how we are going to be doing stuff. But this is just the starting. Now, the next thing is an image. So we need an image. So uh, we'll just draw a rectangle here um, like this. Don't worry about the spacing yet. Just make sure you are keeping consistent to the grid system. Um, so you see, I'm leaving a space one column, one column, just because I don't want my designs, the text to be too wide. We might actually even decrease it in the future, but yeah, let's keep this for now. We have our image. Now that leads me to the next thing. How do we get images for our designs? Images, stock images and all of those stuff. We usually have platforms like Freepik and then uh, on Splash, okay? Um, so, um, I usually prefer Freepik because it has really good quality um, images. And so what's our article about design systems? So let's just say design thinking, yeah, design, design thinking. I'm just gonna type in design thinking 
and then I have some images about design thinking. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, I like this lady. Um, great. So this doesn't look like a free image. So I'm going to go back. Design thinking, design thinking. Is this premium or free? Great, this is free. So I'm just going to copy this image. Again, guys, I just love to copy and paste. I don't like to download. So uh, I'll just copy. And then here's another trick. If you want to paste the image here, after copying it like I did, all you need to do is select this and then control V. And then to paste the image inside the shape. So that's another trick on how to um, basically um, copy and paste images in your design. So yeah, you will find yourself doing this a lot. Now, the next thing we are going to do is, let me just increase the size of this a little. The next thing we are going to do is the article body. So we can see something interesting here, right? So they have the person who posted the article and then when the article was published and then a button to follow. Now we do not need this. So we are going to use this and then publish date. Uh, I don't think the article has any category. So instead of doing this, we'll have give a category to our article. So let's do that. So first of all, there is a line uh, right here. So again, creating a line, just come here, line, and then you create your line. Now we mentioned something about keeping the design consistent or constrained. So we realized that when we're drawing a, a, rec, a square, we had to press shift. If you want to draw a straight line, just press shift and then it just draws the straight line for you. And make sure anytime you are drawing the line, you keep to the constraints that we have here. So zoom in, make sure you hold shift and keep it to this section here. Now, um, I would introduce another thing to you guys, which is transparency. So we know that this here is solid black color, but then this is gray, right? So there are two ways you can actually do the gray. You can either select a gray color, right? Uh, which again, we don't have in our design system. So what you are going to do is use transparency. So we select the line. And then here, right under the stroke here, we say let's say 20% opacity, and then it still gives us the gray. So that's another thing. So if you have a style guide that does not have gray scale colors and you want to use gray, uh, you can just um, do uh, use the opacity on the black color that they have. So that's another thing you can um, also use. Then the next thing we have is this and this. So let's see which type skills we use. So for instance, this can be a body type skill and then this can be a caption. So we have a body text and a caption. Let's just drag them over and give them a black color. And don't worry, we'll modify all of these things later on. So good. Then we have, we have the person's profile. So again, let's select uh, an ellipse and then hold shift and then just drag till it's 60 somewhere. I'm just eyeballing right now. I'm not measuring anything. And then we make this go closer and something like this. So let's see if it looks like what we have. Yeah, it looks similar to what we have. Now, we just... Uh, I'll just put my name there and then uh, freelancer something whatever so we have this then on the right we have the published date so we can use the same um, body text here then we align to right Again, when you learn more about the typography on Figma, you realize how to use some of these things. Then we'll say um, Saturday, March 23, 2024. That's today. Okay. Uh, I think we should keep it as, as that. Um, and then we are going to shift this up a little. 
and I'm going to show you guys um, how to do the spacing, but I want us to structure the page now. Then the next thing is uh, what is design thinking and the rest of the article. And so uh, we are going to basically do this. Now, what we are going to do here is you realize that it has titles, description. That brings us back to the type skill that we have. So we know that the article body is body text, and then we use the sub title for the T headings. And so that's what we are going to do. So we have this, which is going to be, what is design thinking? And then we have this, which is this, okay? Then we are going to still reduce it a little um, for now. And then the next thing is this, right? So again, we'll just duplicate what we already have here. Uh, and then just paste it as usual. So we are just doing copy and paste right now. And the next thing, duplicate. Let's copy this. Great. Then completion. Great. So now we have our article. Okay. At least we have the structure now um for our article so we have the basic design for now now you notice another thing right you realize that as i mentioned earlier when you compare this to let's say a medium article okay this looks more narrow right so it's easy for you to read and digest the content and look at the spacing between the content so we are going to modify our design to basically follow this pattern, especially the narrow um, layout. So there is a concept called design iterations. So the more design iterations you do, the better your designs become most of the time, at least like basically that's what it means. And so we are going to basically do design iterations until we get our desired outcome. And that also includes changing the size and all of these things as well. So the first design iterations we are going to do is just duplicate this page, copy and paste, or just hold shift and command and then drag. We'll just label this iteration one. Okay. Now in iteration one, uh, we looked at a medium article. I don't know which one it is. Let's see. Uh, Let's see, there was one article that had the image full width. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's see our mood board. Okay, we don't have that, but let's see our next iteration, right? We are going to make the image full width like this. Okay. And then instead of using the eight columns, we are going to push our article sort of to the center somewhere here. So we are leaving three columns on the left and right, uh, like this. Um, okay, let's leave two columns on the left and right, like this. And we are going to reduce the font size of this a little. So let's say to 72, something like that. And then we'll, this will also follow suit, something like this. And uh, again, I feel like this is more too cramped in terms of line height. So I'm going to increase the line height a little to 140. And then uh, I'll let it be like this. Okay. And then we have our article image. Uh, width right 
and then we are going to do the same thing here. So here, I'm going to push this here, and then we are going to push this here. And then for the content itself, we're going to push it here. And I think that works. So this is our second iteration, right? So you see where this is going. We are basically iterating or improving on the designs or changing the layout to see what would be our desired outcomes. So that's where design iterations come from. So when you hear design iteration, this is basically design iterations. And so again, we can say, okay, what if our article image comes first? So let's do something like this, push this down. Then we'll bring this down and then our article image is on the top, right? And then we have something like this. Okay, then we can have something like this. Oh, and let's not forget our line. Uh, our line here. So let's say our line is somewhere here. Okay, this is another design iteration. So this is the time where you go crazy about how you want your layouts to be and how you want to organize your blog design. So this is another iteration. Another one could be, let's say this iteration here, this iteration here like this, iteration three, but then this information goes to the top here, the image comes down, then we reduce this text a little more, we shift this to the top a bit, and then up a bit, everything up a bit like this, everything up a bit like this. So this is another iteration as well, right? So you see where this is going. We are just experimenting with more layouts. You could also say, okay, what if my image is on the left or right, and then my title is on somewhere? So there are two columns. So we can have something like this. Uh, let's say something like this, where this is here, somewhere here, like this. Okay. So we have something like this. Then let me just copy this thing and bring it down somewhere here. And then we see our image is somewhere here. Okay. And then this information, let's say this information is somewhere here. Let's say we have something like this. Uh, let's reduce this a bit. Then we reduce this a bit. Okay, so we can have something like this, a design like this, and then we can have our content follow as well. So there are various ways you can actually experiment with how you lay out the design of the blog and mostly it's really up to uh, you and your creativity right and then the amount of content the blog article has so you realize our article in this case has little or scanty content it's not very long and so we need to present it in a way that it's appealing to all users as well so um yeah so depending on the content you are dealing with and how you want to design it to appeal um users so let me check there are some questions Okay, so why is the first paragraph so far from the right margin? Right, right. So again, like um, when you look at the pattern to how people read, so um, user reading patterns, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. You see what's happening here? You see what's happening here? Uh, I'm just gonna share this link as well so you can read. Uh, 
So there are various patterns to how people read. And most of the time, it's usually from left to right, okay? And so people track from left to right. And as I mentioned, when people are reading, you don't want to extend the thing to the end of the last paragraph. You want to keep it constrained in a way that they don't have to read larger width, but then in shorter width. That way, it's easier for users to consume um, knowledge or information. And so that is why um, you realize that the design is basically like I'm trying to keep things to the left and as short as possible, right? Another thing is depending on the layouts and then the content width. And so uh, again, I can decide to keep things in the center more concise. So let's see if an iteration like this, where uh, let's say this is smaller, right? And then things are more to the center like this. Okay, so now there are equal uh, columns on the left and right. So three, three on the left and right. And I will keep things here like this. So when you see most of those micro blocks that have little content, very, very short stuff, you see that most of them look like this. Right, so let's say something like this. So we can have something like this. Again, like the content stays within these constraints, right? Just like that. So that's something that also like exists um, as well. So it really depends on how you want to design the layout, how you want to make the layout look uh, and appeal to your users. So how big is the frame you created for the blog post? So again, there are frame when we started, right? So when you select a frame, right? Because you are designing for desktop, you select the desktop and you choose whichever one works for you. Most of the time, and again, again, if I'm to recommend for you guys, I would use desktop, okay? So when you select desktop, desktop is actually 1440. So I would recommend just using this uh, for most of your desktop designs. So just use this, so the width for 1440 and try to keep margin spacing on the left and right based on the grid system you want to use. Any more questions, guys? All right, cool. So now that we have iterations of, let's see how we want our blog our articles to be, um, we are not very satisfied. I'm personally not very satisfied with this design. And so um, it's possible to iterate on as many articles as possible, uh, as many as you can. Right, so there are several layouts layouts that you can basically experiment with. So uh, let me see, grid all. So let's say blog post. Okay, so again, somebody has this layout. Um, somebody also has this layout here. Uh, which basically has a title and all of this information before the content. Uh, somebody also has this layout here, which is centered. And then you see how this is centered. You have this information in the blog article. So that's something you can also learn from. Um, somebody also prefers this layout. And so maybe you have a static image on the left and then the right side will be scrolling. So again, this is an example where you have you have something like this where the image takes half, let's say half of the space, something like this. And then you have the rest of your article on the right like this. So everything else sort of follows you. So what's happening is that you have this image. So again, let me quickly venture into prototyping a little so you see what I mean. So you have these fixed in place and then everything else will scroll. So when people are reading, let me just quick, quickly do this. So when we view the prototype, 
we set the prototype to our device, which is like um, our desktop, which is 1440 by 1024, right? We have, again, this is how it will look when somebody is viewing the page for our designs. So you see, this is not the best. Then we have this as well. Uh, it looks okay, but still, we are not satisfied. This is another design iteration where we have all of these things. Uh, and then this is okay, quite okay. And then this one as well. So you see how the type is laid out. Everything is very legible. You can see it very clearly. The image is clear. This is how when it's, it's developed, you are going to see it. And then we have this design here as well, where the title is on the left, and then the image is on the right. And then we have the rest of the article. And then we have this option as well. Then we have this option, right, which is what I prototyped. So this image is going to be static, and then the right side will scroll. Right, so that's how, um, again, another design you can also use um, on your, your designs as well. So this has a little prototype, uh, which uh, hopefully uh, I would share some links later on for you to learn about prototypes, but um, hopefully when we have some time, we can look at prototypes a little bit. So that's, that's another thing. So there are various ways you can actually structure your, your designs um, for them to, to look amazing. And yes, images make a huge impact when you are designing. So image, the images you use, the fonts you use, how you lay out the typography and all of those things make a huge impact on how you design. Now the next thing I want to touch on quickly has to do with spacing. Okay, so I'm just going to, let's say, drag this down. And let's say this is iteration six. Now you realize that as I was laying out the designs, I was paying attention to some spacings, right? Now, most of the time, so spacing system, most designs are based on, most designs, as I say, are based on eight pixel grid systems. So you have most of these, Content framework is based on that particular grid system, which is eight pixels. So okay, again, eight point grid system. So it's just like a multiple of eight. And again, how you use it depends on you most most of the time, right? So if you are using an eight pixel grid system, you realize that everything is a multiple of eight. So you have eight, sixteen, thirty-four, thirty-two, forty, right? And so let me just add this. Uh, as well, there is a video that teaches you everything about spacing, so don't worry. Once you watch, you understand. But then, this is the most used. Like eight pixel grid system is the most used, and it's either multiples of eight or eight uh, dividends, or yeah, you can divide uh, by eight. So you usually can have two, and then you can have four. So that's mostly what we use, uh, and. Uh, I'm going to show you how you basically use it. Now, in design, if you remember the laws of UX, right? One of the laws, um, let's see. Good. One of the UX laws says what? Objects that are near or proximate to each other tend to be grouped together. And so when you come here, you realize that most of the time, when you are looking at this, right, when you are looking at this whole thing here, your brain is telling you that, okay, we have the title, and then maybe this is part of this, if we are grouping items, right, you are likely to group these two items together than to group this and this, okay? So what's going to happen is we are going to group these two things together, okay? Now, in grouping them, we need to make sure that there is substantial spacing between the two so people can tell the differences. And so, what usually happens, depending on the 8 pixel grid system, is for something like this that has a big heading and then like a medium text, you usually have, let's say, a spacing of, let's say, uh, we can say 24. So, it's 24 divisible by 8. Yes, it means 3. So, we can have 24 spacing between these two. 
it makes these two possible to group and uh, to group together. Then again, if these two things are grouped together, it means that we can group these two things together, right? Same goes for these two things, right? So here we want to make sure our spacing complies with the eight pixel grid. And we know that if we increase this by eight like this, you see the design looks weird. There's too much space. So we want to lower it to four. So when you check again, how do I how am I showing the red lines? Uh, you just press option and then hover. So select one item, press option and to give you the red lines. So we make sure that this spacing here is uh, complies with the eight pixel or eight point grid system. Another thing means that we can group these two objects. Now, when we group these two objects, they form a unit with this here, right? So what's the spacing between these two is 16. Does it comply with our uh, spacing system? Yes, it does because eight times two is 16. Is this spacious enough for us to see the legibility? Yes, it works for us, so we'll keep it that way. Then we have this as well. So now this group, these two guys here now become a group. And we need to make sure that between these and then this group, there is enough spacing, right? So yes, we see that there is enough spacing, but does it comply with our grid system? Can I divide 54 by eight? No. Right, but then we can do 56 divided by 87. And so we can say 56, right? So do you understand the pattern? So the pattern basically is have substantial spacing, make sure items are grouped enough to make sense, and then make sure you try to keep with the eight points grid system. Same goes for here. So 64, 64 divided by eight is eight. So it complies. So that's the pattern you use to basically design your spacing. And so as you do that, you realize that your designs become more consistent. The spacing makes more sense. And then it's more legible for users. Same goes here. So we select every grid, the spacing between here, you can make it uh, 86. 86 can be divided by eight. Oh no, 80, uh, 80 can be divided by eight by 10. So we can do um, 80 like this, right? And then even in between these two items, we can do the same thing. So just use more of the red line, see 16, consistent 16, consistent 16, and then consistent 16. And then this group and this group is 32, consistent 32, 32. Right, so there is macro and micro spacing. The more you play with these things, the more you get to know how to use them. And sometimes you use this spacing without necessarily having to pay so much attention because you are used to how spacing works. Um, so yeah, guys, um, there is a lot of resource here um, that you can basically just go through to understand how spacing works. Any questions? So far, um, so yeah, um, I guess no questions. So the next thing we are going to do is uh, try to see if we can finalize on our designs, but for the final designs that we'll be doing, um, I would like you guys, that is the assignment you are going to be doing. Now we plan on designing a blog, right? And usually when you design a blog, it has the main blog page, which contains like the articles, right? Cards of the articles, if you may see, and then the specific article page that makes up the blog. So ideally, if we are supposed to design something like that, we'll probably have something like this, where we have uh, learn from S, something like that, right? And then we will have, uh, we'll have something like this, where the articles,
So we have the archive page or the main article page, right, with some excerpts of the blog post. Uh, why design system is not to we'll have something like this, right? So we have articles like this. Okay. So we have a lot of those articles on the main article page with images and stuff. I'm not paying so much attention to the grid layout right now. Just want to demonstrate for you guys so that you can take that as an assignment. So we have the main article page and then this, when one of them is clicked on, it takes you to the specific article page. So the assignment uh, for this particular, uh, for next week um, is for us to basically um, design the article page, which we have some examples in the new uh, in the mood board that we created. So we have an example of medium, and then we have this example as well. So you can see the cards, you click on it, it takes you to the article. So we designed the archive page or the blog directory page, and then we designed a single article page. Don't worry about the header or footer, just focus on the main content, right? And when you, when you look online, there are so many blog design examples or layouts that you can basically take inspiration from, especially on Dribble. So this is an example, right? They have the articles designed in many formats. Um, this is another interesting one. This layout here is very interesting as well. And then I think this would, this would probably be one of the best, uh, something like that. So the assignment is to design the article directory page like this. Uh, again, it's up to you. you. Can have images, however you want to lay this out. The title, the article summary. You can add a category or date if you want. So when you look at some of these, let's see. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you see that some of the articles have the article category, the editor or the writer, and then the date published before the hero image. Some of them don't have the um, the summary. Again, entirely up to you to decide how you want to go about this particular um, work. And so um, I'd like you to design the article archive page, and then we have the specific page. Mind you, typography is very important. Spacing is very important. The images you use are very key to your article. And then also the general layout of how you design your article. I encourage you to do as many explorations as possible or iterations as possible. Um, is that okay? Yes, so, um, so can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. So yes, this assignment is for next week because we won't be having a call next week. And so instead of us being on the call next week, you have next week to do the work. And then um, we would have an AMA session, which will likely be our last session 